Um, so, can someone go to that bug? Uh, I am. I'm. I'm guessing she was talking about this one, the clear uh, cataloging module homepage. Okay. Thank you. Um, oh, looks nice. Does anyone have something definitive to say about it? It is nice to have everything in one place. I usually uh, go to the tools page and do all my cataloging stuff from there. Yeah, adding all those cataloging tools to the cataloging homepage makes sense to me. Um, I think that does look nice. There are a few attachments on the bug if you don't see those. Um, that I think that was I the one thing I looked at. Yeah, so... Um, there's the attachment of the four column layout um yeah i think that's a good improvement too it okay, looks like yeah. this bug needs sign off so um that's something that we could do maybe not here but as people who catalog <laughs> um we could definitely take a look and set up a sandbox and um make sure it's it's as great live as it looks in that static image. Yes. And I do notice there's discussion at the bottom of the ticket about bringing back the toolbar with the advanced cataloging in C3950. Um, so there are there's some points of contention that we could also chime in on. It sort of has something to do with cataloging since I was looking for records yesterday. Um, there used to be, maybe there still is, but mine doesn't have it. Uh, when you go to advanced search, you got the neat little item search drop down. Is it still there? It wasn't in the version I was using yesterday, which is... Um, let's see, 2105. I'm trying to upgrade. It's not going smoothly. So, yeah, on 2111 at the top, I can share my screen. It'll probably be easier than me trying to paint a picture with words. <laughs> um, let's see. So I've got this, is this what you're talking yeah. about, Fred? Yeah, uh -huh. so the item search is there. And then in, in 2111, they also added it to the home mm. page here. So it's easier to get to. Yeah, I know mine used to be there, but it isn't anymore. Hmm. I wonder if, yeah, I don't know. Because I yeah. think that this part has been there for quite a while with the little drop down carrot. Yes, I don't think I did anything. Well, if you can get upgraded, that should fix your problems. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. No, wait a minute. Okay. It wasn't there on one of the screens I tried yesterday, but it's on the about screen. Okay. So I have a question. Um, I wanted to, uh, I've uh, staged a batch and I wanna be able to um, export it or subsets of it, you know, back out and then probably edit the item records and then 
put it back in, but I want it to match. I'm not going to be able to match against the ISSN or the ISBN. So I want it to match against the, I guess the, the control number, maybe the 001 and the 003, I think. I wanted to have the identifier because I'm not sure that my control numbers are going to be unique. Uh, how about using the 999C or D? I'll be ag ad tagged to a specific COA record. Means nothing in Mark, uh, at least nothing in cataloging. The index for that that you'd have to set up in the matching rule is something like local control number. Yeah. There should be some information on the wiki. I remember setting up a lot of those in the day. Yeah, I, I set up ours. I could probably do it again somehow. <laughs> okay, and so um, um, the a problem that I have is. Uh, it may work now based on what you've just said, because my uh, using the 001 and the 003 um, isn't working on the, when I, so I need to set up a uh, record matching rule, right? Yes. Okay. So I went into record matching rule and to establish match point, right? Okay. And I put in, is it, do I, I need to come up with a specified search index then? Mm -hmm. And there's a, a, a an exact. It's called yeah. It has a name. Okay, and I need yeah. to find find that exact search index name, and a score. I understand how that works, and um, so I do need then un, under nine 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 C or D. I don't know to come up with a unique local identifier. So I have multiple organizations, and they're each going to have um accession numbers basically okay well and, koha, go ahead as you say koha automatically assigns the 999c and the 999d it's it's the biblio number so it's already in the record when you're importing the record so you shouldn't have to add anything to it so it's the 100 best match when you're importing a record when you know you want this record to match this record it's it's like the the best match Oh, well, I don't, I, I don't, I can't use a number that Koha is going to give me. I have to use a number that's given to me ahead of time. So I have um, uh, various, um, say, say, libraries, and they're giving me their batches of bib records. Okay. And some of their bib records, um, some of their holdings are going to be the same as what's already in the catalog. So I need to match against. The, so it's not a, so I can't assign the, I can't assign the identifier on the way into Koha. It's already pre existing. Right. I gotcha. Um, I don't believe 003 is indexed. I don't know that you could use that as a match point. I'd have to look. 001 is a match point, but you're, you're I think it sounds like your trick is to find the very best match or match points that you can in the data that you're receiving and the data you're trying to connect it to uh, or match it to. And it's that that's a very local thing. Um, um, how about, uh, okay, you're getting records from various libraries. Does one library have really great records and another yes. library yes. has terrible records? Exactly, yep, that's that's the situation, yeah. Okay. Uh, you could use mark edit and to eliminate duplicate records and use the you know, 001 or 003. Uh, just make sure that when you're making this enormous list of all the mark records together, put the one with the great records at the top and then say keep the first one. Mm -hmm. Is that, first of all, does that make sense? Second of all, am I correct? <laughs> Yeah, that I've, I've used that trick in Mark Edit before too. It's it is if you Mark Edit's pretty powerful. There's probably a video on that that uh, Terry has put out on removing duplicate records. But again, I think it comes down to your match point because if you're going to tell it that the duplicates can be identified through the 001, 
if you don't have those 001s in the like bad records, it's not going to find them as duplicates. Right. Either. I don't. I don't. So um, really, it's one. I have one set of really high quality records, and I need to be able to. It's it's a long story, but basically, I need to be able to um, take that set and um, export it, and then manipulate it. And then bring it back in that that one set, uh, which is and then manually I'm going to have to match uh, the new the, the other the other um, the other collections. But what happens is when I use match points, when I use this record matching, it errors out. It's not like for some reason it doesn't. Um, is there some other setting that I have to? Um, implement before I can do the record matching rules because it's not saving I, I'm trying to test match points and it's not saving the match points it just doesn't save them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. does that ring any bells it's, so I, I I have you know record matching rule code and I can the, the, I can set up the top part of the screen uh, but then once I get into match points it just doesn't seem to so like even if I there was an example that I found in one of the manuals or something and I tried to just copy it just to see if I could do it and I can't it's not saving the the match point okay yeah I would say give up on that for a while and fiddle around with mark edit and of course back up all your files well I've been fiddling with mark edit so I've, I've okay. taken, I, I I loaded it into mark edit and I, um, you know, I set up an 003, although it sounds like I can't necessarily use the 003. Um, so, which means I might have to preface the accession number with a three letter code, like the OCM, for example, except use it mm -hmm. for the, I get that. And then I can save it as a MRC file and then stage it. Um, but I need to be able to then export it and then re export it. And then I want to manipulate the item records, the 952 at a later date. Right now, I'm just it's basically I'm, I'm, I'm having to manipulate the item records so that they don't point. They're just pointing to a website. I can't use the exact item at this stage of the project, I can't um, work with the exact um, with the barcode number and all that. I have to just use a URL, a generic URL for for all these records. So at a later date, I need to export this this set of nice records and attach legit item records to it, and then re-import it. And I guess I'll re-import it maybe against the 001. I don't know. If I can't use the 003, then just, but I'm not able to even test it with this, with because the match points aren't setting up. I am, uh, I came late to the meeting, so I'm not 100% sure what everybody's talking about. Um, it sounds like Nelson is having an issue with importing stuff into his catalog. I have never used the mark uh, match. I've never created mark matching rules. And I was just looking at the interface and it seems a little confusing to me. So I'm asking uh, in, by, in Slack in Bywater's channel, I'm suggesting to Kelly and Jesse that maybe a Monday minutes on how to set up mark matching rules would be a really useful uh, Monday minutes for some people. Uh, because I've never, I, I don't know anybody that's ever done it before because most of the people I know um, are Bywater customers and, and we all just say, hey, could somebody set up a matching rule for me? So that seems yeah. like it mm -hmm. might be useful. I've done it. Uh, and it- Thank you. I've done it several times and I, I'd have to go back and learn how to do it again. But it's once you figure out how to do it, it's moderately straightforward. Yeah, it almost sounds like there's something sort of messed up in your setup to a Nelson if it's not mm -hmm. saving at all. Are are you yeah. what version are you running right now? Uh 
I think it's 20.11. Okay. So that's 20, sort of an older 21, version. 21. Sorry. 2111. I think it's 2111. Okay. So that's what we're running and we've got matching point 14. So yeah, I, just, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's 2111. Um, and you're not, you're not currently um, hosting, getting hosting from anybody. You're doing this all on your own, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. So I like George, I can't offer much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I remember setting some up when I worked at, at a different job like 10 years ago. Um, but I did it with the help of somebody from Bywater. I think I did it with the help from Ruth probably. So it's been a long time ago. Um, but uh, yeah, when I look at it now, it's like, I don't remember what all of these things mean. And so it seems like it would be something that it'd be really nice to have a walkthrough for. I came in late too. This is Christy. Um, and I've done matching points since I'm in acquisitions. Um, and it's about importing our full marks. Um, we're trying not to overlay some records and overlay others. Um, I've done it on my own. I've had help from Bywater. Um, neither is working because of the way Koha is set up right now. Um, but simplistically, if you're doing a, a simple um, rule, it's pretty easy to set up. Um, so again, sorry, I came in late, not sure what you're doing. And I should probably mention for everyone who came in late, uh, Heather uh, got a COVID booster and is uh, under the weather. So I'm running the meeting as much as anyone is. Does. If anyone else would like to take over. Um, you're doing great, well, Fred. Okay. Uh, I put a blog post in the chat, which um, I wrote a number of years ago. It's an oldie, but a goodie. And it is all about match points. Um, it, it is referencing another blog post that is, is I think, missing on our website. So I'm going to do see if I can go find that link to that blog post that's referenced in this particular blog post, make sure that that's active for you. And I think if we can do an updated um, Monday Minutes, I think that's a great idea with Kelly and Jesse. So uh, right, thank and you. Nelson, are you on the cataloging email list? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, if I can figure out what I did or how I did it, uh, I can post the steps. Okay, great. Thank you. And that leaves, for next month. Hmm? that leaves me to a question. Uh, let's say you have um, stage records and put them into and then you look on the manage stage records page and there are a few records that uh, are duplicates that I really don't want to upload. Is there an easy way to do that other than go back, take out the records I don't want and stage and manage again? Not yet. Okay. But I know of things that are coming. Um, and I, what I don't have is a particular bug in front of me to kind of point you to. I'll see if I can find that as well. Um, I might ask Nick if he remembers it. But one of the things that we were wrestling with was is exactly what you're talking about and having the ability to either approve a match or maybe designate to not import something on that screen. Because otherwise you're right, you're sort of stuck sort of backing back out of it, removing records and then re-importing it. And that's, that's tedious, right? Nobody likes that. Yeah, well, I don't mind tedious. What I do mind is tedious that I don't have to. Right, exactly. Yes. <laughs> the bad kind of tedious. Yeah, not the good kind. Yes. And right before this meeting, <laughs> and I'm about, I'm almost finished. So I, if there's an easier way, on, well, tell me for next time. Uh, We've got a lot of um, online books. Uh, some of them are ones that we have licensed through uh, a vendor. Some of them, I can't remember if anyone here is familiar with Rittenhouse R2. Um, don't see anyone nodding. Um, you get their entire collection, but can only use them for three sessions, after which you either have to buy it 
um, online, which is astonishingly expensive. We, um, we sometimes buy the book, which is maybe a third, or we just don't have it anymore. So I realized that I need to, what I really need to do is um, um, so I exported everything that was classified as ebook, changed all the R2 ebooks to R2 ebook in item type and other places. And now I need to just merge everything back into the original with Mark Edit saying overwrite just these files. Is that? Anyone have a better way? <laughs> Anyone have the foggiest idea of what I'm trying to do? Uh, Did you mean overwrite just these files or just these fields? Just these, just these fields. Good. Sorry. I understand. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think all I want to overwrite on the fields are probably the uh, 952, 942. Um, they also uh, copied the 060 field in the 952.0. It's the started because somebody wants a list of all the radiology books we have. So I went through and exported all the WNs, except the online books don't have call numbers because, well, why would you need call numbers? Well, I think this is a good example of why they need call numbers. Yes. Of course, it's the first time, second time, and I'm not sure how many years. Not sure. Some things are easier to go back and redo than others. Right, Nelson? <clears throat> yes. Others exactly. you regret. Yeah. <laughs> If no one has, okay, then I'll bring up another question I had. Um, there was something at the conference. Uh, um, someone talking about um, being able to put um, Mark Field anywhere on the OPAC, even if it's not generally there. Was that bootstrap four? You, anyone remember? Yeah, uh, I played okay. around with Galadriel and it is beautiful, but it doesn't seem to have that. Oh, yeah. You can use the API, like API calls to do that. I think that's um, what Lucas was talking about. Lucas, yes, thank you. Okay. I have to go back and watch that again, of course. Uh, I don't think he actually explained how to do it. He just talked about how it's possible. So. Did he show where? He has a blog where? post on how to do it. OK. That, um, I've successfully executed. So I think that's that one. Uh, it is a little tricky, but uh, it's doable. <laughs> trickier than uh, editing the XLT files? No, because editing XSLT is the worst X thing in the world. Never do it. Well, that's the only way I could get the author's catalog to work. Not anymore. You can use this Biblio yeah. API inflate. Well, that's why it's still running um, 17 something. Oh, uh, uh, are you? Did you just say, Fred? You're running Koha seventeen something. Mm -hmm. You may not have access to the API, so you may actually may need to upgrade to get access to the APIs in order. To well, do yes. I mean, yes. if I upgrade, <laughs> then maybe I can rearrange it and get right. rid of the modified templates. Because yeah. when I tried to up, upload or upgrade, uh, they the whole thing was broken. Yeah. Sounds like you need a test server, right? I have, have only one. do I have a test server, I have images that I can spin up nice. and 
yeah, I don't do anything without doing it on the test server first. Oh, that's good. That's good. You make me feel less guilty about running old, old stable. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. It works, right? Yeah. Yes. And somebody else gets to deal with all the bugs. Not sure if that's a compliment or I think it is. Thank you, George. Everything I say is a compliment. Oh, okay. Oh, if you looked at the evaluations. Well, for the conference? Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, there's a uh, public link to the dashboard that yeah, I, I saw them yesterday. The committee has, so there's a lot of good compliments. Uh, well, people didn't like my poems. I think some you need some new stuff. Yeah, I think there, so. it's a comp, it's, it's a, a combination. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. I think next year it needs to be all new material. No, no I know poetry. Only not everyone thing. appreciates an artist, right? <laughs> you just don't let, don't let, don't take it too personally. Uh, I, I love, I love your poems. <laughs> <laughs> My goal is to be the uh, official poetaster of Koa US. Nope, not going to say it. Sorry, BBC sent out something. Yeah, the only thing I have that, well, two new things, a song about a disease and one about leaving in Foley catheters too long. I don't think it's... a Koa audience wouldn't like either one of them. Yeah, I, I don't even like being reminded of Foley catheters. Well, based on the comments you're referring to in the survey, they don't like your other stuff either. So what difference does it make whether it's about Koa? <laughs> We're about fully catheter catheters. <laughs> Touche. Good point. <laughs> so I see that Joy put that other blog post in there about match points. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, go ahead. I, I also put the, the one that I found it's actually in 2205 about it's it's one step towards helping manage those matches in mark records so uh you might want to take look forward to 2205 um I'm sorry Fred that's a ways away for you <laughs> if you're on 17 but for everybody else who maybe is a little closer to 2205 that can undertake that or if if you're on Bywater when we do those rollouts yeah uh well the actual library catalog is 2105 I think okay okay or not too far off. Anyway, it's an older version. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's the one I've been up trying to upgrade on my test server. And I did, hmm? I found a bug that talks about internal server errors when trying to save match points. I put that in the chat as well. So that uh -huh. might be what you're running into. Ah, uh -huh. great. Okay. So that's like an open and outstanding issue. It looks like it was pushed to master in 2211. So just recently, uh, um, that's or twenty two eleven. Not that recent. Yeah, that's the next release. <laughs> so hopefully it gets backported. Um, and oh, okay. Sometimes you can go in and add a comment and say, "I hope this gets backported," and somebody will pick it up. Um, but I'm not sure if there's a workaround. I didn't read through the bug too deeply. Okay, and I would find that. Where would I find that? The, the information about that bug? I, I'm not I'd, familiar with with the bug tracking stuff. I just posted that in the chat again. Oh, in the uh, chat. Okay. Yeah, yeah, great, great. Okay, it's bug two eight two nine zero. Okay, great. Thanks. Oh yeah, this would totally explain it, um, Nelson, because the 003 doesn't have subfields, right? And that's specifically what this one is about. So, yep. Good find, Jason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The 003, well, I tried to simply use 001 by mm -hmm. itself, and mm -hmm. that also was... was right, because there are no subfields, yeah. Oh, okay, great. 
<clears throat> excuse me. Okay, this is going to be tedious. Um, the good kind. <laughs> Uh, try uh, maybe copying in mark edit uh, the swap fields. Copy the 003 to let's say a 987A. Oh, to, or to some sort of fake around. field to give it a field that's got subfields. Yes. Okay. All right. 987 is. I don't think it stands for anything okay. anywhere. Yeah. Does it have right. an index? Uh, probably not. Uh, right. Okay. Is so there that, something? That's the trick. Yeah. Um, how about, let's see. Um, how about a 650J or something? Something that is indexed but doesn't have a subfield? And then you can just delete all the subfields. Sounds like a workaround, maybe. So I'll, so I'll look up the indexes, um, just look down the whole list of, of fields that are that come indexed out of the out of the box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you saw uh, Lauren and my presentation uh, about uh, importing CSV files, one of the early pictures was of a crescent wrench being used as a hammer. Hmm. Um, it works. It's not elegant, but it works. Yeah, I have I have periodic um, this external catalog. They're going to send me their entire record set periodically, and so I have to be able to match with their accession number um, each time I go in. You know, each time I import it. That's great. I'll I'll look look for that. Thanks. What field is their accession number? Is that 035? Uh, and is this just a number they assigned by some method known to them? Um, I think it's a it's an old uh, version of it's a old it's a forked version of Koha actually, um, and. I don't recall, Fred, to give you a straight answer. Let's see. I think it's the 001, actually. Yeah, OK. Yeah, and I just treat that as the accession number. What are the chances of some of the libraries having duplicates? Some this particular record set that comes let's, from one this one external library. No, let's say library A and library B may have same accession number. Oh, um, it's conceivable. I mean, so like one of the accession numbers is like one on this 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 record set that has the quality records has a an accession number that looks like it could be used. I'm just theorizing it could be used by another organization. So it has like 1000 <laughs> as an accession number. And that's to me looks like, you know, a recipe for um, a duplicate duplicate. So um, since there's a little bit of silence, I'll ask a question about, may I ask a question about uh, Mark Edit? I, I wanted to um, merge two subfields. 
it's the same the same external uh, library that splits the uh, the call number out into two subfields that are not the same subfields as as Koha as we use in Koha. I forget what the the letters are, but but basically to to merge the two fields, will I need to use regular expressions? The two oh, subfields. I couldn't find my mute button fast enough. I just did this um, for a library and you could use regular expressions. They are difficult in Mark Edit because they follow the Microsoft standard reg regex um, and not the sort of one I'm used to, which is um, based on Linux. Um, however, you can also do this through what they call assigned tasks that I, if you have, if you're gonna do this on a large scale for large numbers of files by telling it to take this file and insert it, like for example, if it's H and I, which is typically what we'll I'll see in something like Follett, you're gonna you're gonna say take the I or take the H and prefix it to the I or take the I and put it at the end of the H. Mark Edit has a couple of ways to do it, um, but I would encourage you to sort of look into into that area of the fields, not necessarily field swaps, but but the field editing. Um, I've and done stuff called, like that. That's called assigned tasks in Mark. Well, that's one way. Yeah, it's one way to do it so that you can save it as sort of a macro essentially and then run it against a file all of the time and then, you know, um, always make a backup, right? Right. And then, like, oh, that didn't work, throw that file out, uh -huh. tweak it, try it again. Um, I mean, what I wanted to do was, to, it was find a good way just to, to take out several records because it's, mm -hmm. it's 20, it's 20,000 records. And I wanted to just take, you know, three or four of them <laughs> and just play with three yeah, or four right. of them at a time. A good idea <laughs> yeah. and then um yeah mm -hmm. but i did yeah. have it manually because i couldn't really figure out how to do it with mark edit so i just cut and pasted into a new into a new uh record into a new file mm -hmm. i use almost everything i do in mark edit i i use assigned tasks for and essentially what you're doing is you when you're creating an assigned task you figure out what it is that you need to do to the record you can say you know i want to edit a subfield and these are the edits I want to make. And then you um, figure out all the steps that you need to do. And then you're going to tell the assign uh, the task manager, I want to create a new task that does this step, this step, this step in this order. And then every time you run Mark, you open Mark Edit, you'll have that task available. And so instead of having to, to manually go in and say, do this, do this second thing, do this third thing, you just push a button and it'll repeat those over and over again. So it's a pretty easy way to do uh, a lot of cleanup, uh, a lot of repetitive stuff in Mark Edit that you're gonna do over and over again. And, and I can totally see using the, the uh, edit, uh, edit subfield to say, you know, take this, take this subfield and stick it at the end of a different subfield or take this subfield and stick it at the beginning of a different subfield. Um, there and then that it'd be really easy to create as a as a uh, as a regular task with the task manager. And will I when I preface something, do I need to tell it to add a space, or does it automatically know to add a space? You'll have to tell it each thing that you're going to do. You, you're going to say, take this piece. You're 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 just essentially doing like if you were using the you know edit subfield data. Um, and you're going to say, take this from here and replace it with this, or um, I don't know exactly how I would, I've never had to combine two subfields, so I don't know exactly how to do it, but you are probably going to have to build into that to, to take this data plus put a space at the end of it and then put stick it on the front of something else. Uh-huh. Okay. So. But the nice thing with the with the tasks is once you do it, you never have to recreate those steps again. You'll just uh -huh. have it there forever. Uh -huh. I've worked with macros in different uh, environments, and it's it, I, I've experienced the the joy of having things all put together in steps. Yeah, I use this a lot, the programmable keypad. Mm. But lately, I've been finding that Mark Edit will do a lot of the things that I've been doing with that.
If no one else has a question, I'll raise one. Um, <clears throat> if when I'm, I found the easiest way to um, delete records is just go title by title and put them in the cart. Uh, George, I I tried the uh, ISBN that you helped me with. It's um, too many weird ISBNs. But anyway, uh, find the record, put it in a cart, and then do batch delete records from the cart. But sometimes when I click on the cart, uh, I get a 500 error. So I have to empty the cart, go back and see which record is producing that error. Does anyone have a better way to do that? It's cataloging because clearly it's a mark record that's doing it. I guess that's sort of good that nobody knows. Well, for me, um, I'll just kind of speak from my perspective. Usually, Fred, when I see a 500 error, it makes me want to look at the logs on the server. That's the first thing I want to do because I want to understand what caused that 500. And that can a lot of times be things that are inconsistencies. And in what we are finding, what we have found over the past year or two is that inconsistencies in the data uh, will cause those 500 errors because Koha is more strict about them. So if you have legacy data that's not quite as clean, and, and when I say that, I'm usually referring to things like item types that are not, um, that maybe have trailing spaces or um, th things like that can often kind of like um, throw that, throw a monkey wrench into things. It could be that there's some sort of weird hold that's lingering on that record or some sort of circulation or, or something that's tying that record that's preventing it from, from doing that deletion, but the logs will kind of point you to it that you might that might be helpful. I mean, but this is from my perspective, right? And then I would want to take a look at the database to make sure if I don't have sort of a serious issue now with that data to say, okay, let's do some tidying of these codes so that we don't run into that issue anymore because Co has a little bit more strict about how it's handling those things. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, the the records are mostly written house from OCLC. Yeah. I'm shocked OCLs would have a bad record. <laughs> oh no, the horror. <laughs> um, yeah, we find a lot of things like um, hidden control characters. Those are the trickiest bits to, to really suss out because you yeah. just don't see them the, when you look at them. They're frustrating. Yes. They're tedious, the bad kind. <laughs> Well, we've got 15 minutes left if we want it. Well, I have a question I'd like to ask the group. Um, I, I'm curious about the, the thoughts on berberization. Yay or nay? On what? Berberization. So for example, right, like finding your, I'm um, sorry, Fred's like radiology books and then finding um, something else that's related to that, that maybe there's a it's, a, it's a journal versus a DVD and we can kind of, you know, you sort of pull all these, these works together related to that. I mean, more of a classic thing, like all of the instances of Harry Potter, if you've just typed that in, right? And it would sort of group them in, in a way that makes sense for the end user. For those of you who are using Aspen, Aspen does a version of verbalization. Um, and we're looking at putting some of this into Koha on the staff side and also on the yeah, I'll see, see Nelson's on board. Right? <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> um, absolutely. <laughs> um, but yeah. I'm sort of curious how y'all are seeing this. Is There is a need for this on the staff side if, if this is done. Also, I think, I mean, obviously on the OPAC, not every library can afford another product that's a discovery layer on top. So if we can incorporate exactly. some of these concepts of fertilization into this, um, that's beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, what we haven't really sat down to, to think about and like really kind of the for me, it's, it's um, well, first of all, there's obviously sort of development time that needs to be put at this. And then in addition to that, it's understanding before we build something, understanding how, um, how the catalogers who are the ones that have the most knowledge about the data expect it to work. 
I don't know if any of y'all have thoughts on that or a wish list. So I, I put some comments on the bug. You probably saw those, Joy. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, about maybe working at like how authorities work. We can um, have like a repository of the works and group them clusters that way. And I see Heather put some comments on that. I'm sad Heather had to leave because I, I was yeah. interested to, to hear what she had to say as well. <laughs> right. um, but I absolutely do think it would be a great addition to Koha um, because of the, the way that it will allow patrons to access those things, uh, which is sort of the goal of verbalization is to help users get to those things more easily. Um, and I just, I threw out those ideas because I thought maybe that would like streamline and make it go faster, you know, <laughs> like if we can copy the plumbing from authorities and do verbalization with that, that sort of same uh, concept, maybe we can knock out some of those bullet points. Um, but it really, I, as Heather said, I just want developer magic to make it work and I don't know how right. to do that. <laughs> <laughs> right, and there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, and, and when we're talking about something like along those lines, I, I am, I'm all on board with like not having catalogers having to maintain these links. Like that's, that would be ideal. Or enforcing links where they really felt that they were required because the catalog is so specialized, in other words. Um, but, you know, for the example, you know, like what are the sources that are out there that we can actually use to harvest to understand these things um, go together? And now we're going to skate real close to this, we're going to fly real close to the sun here with linked data. And it's like, okay, are we actually looking, should we be looking more towards something like a linked data environment? Um, obviously, understanding that Mark is sort of the underpinning of that currently, but should we be? Should we be going in more of that direction and understanding our collections in that way? Or is that something that um, uh, that, that made Juliet turn her camera on, I guess? <laughs> so you have some thoughts on that? Well, I was just thinking about the, because we use Aspen. And so uh -huh. some of the struggles we've had with the verbalization that's there is that um, we had to change some of the ways item types on things were so that people could put holds on items that were showing up as you know the same thing, but yet yeah, they didn't want, there's, we have some items that aren't allowed holds, but they're the same mm -hmm. thing as something that is allowed holds. So we had to change the bib records and put them on their own bib record and things mm -hmm. like that. So there's a lot, of, I'm not very well versed with the cataloging part, mm -hmm. but just being able to control that. And then the other thing that I was just thinking of is, it includes overdrive records in ours and mm -hmm. we don't have any control of how overdrive makes their records and so sometimes it'll match really weird and we mm -hmm. can't really fix it because they've made their overdrive record weird that that's a an issue and i don't know how to solve that one yeah that that's that's what i i hear a lot um that and it's not just overdrive, but you know, essentially any third-party record that you're ingesting, if, you know, you you don't have the resources to do the cataloging that you feel is required to really make it a valid and good findable record. You're sort of stuck with this thing. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> we don't know how it was made. I'm sure they're auto-generating these things. I'm sure they don't have a staff of catalogers. I'd put money on that one. Um, so auto generated records are obviously have limitations. I always this is why I say we still have we still have control over the machines, right? Because we haven't right. fully developed AI. Um, they yeah. don't have that sort of thought to be able to put to things. But I um, think having it in Aspen has really improved discovery for our patrons. Right. And like there's been times when I wanted a book and I didn't even think to check Overdrive, but it told me it was there, and I was like, oh, I can listen to it. So it's mm -hmm. it's nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I think that it it would be nice to make it sort of uh, neutral, like maybe it's not a mark mark record that we're cataloging the work under. Maybe it is like a a, a record that is just attributes, you know, the attributed mm -hmm. title, the attributed author um, that could then pull from those external sources. I my concern with using an external source is first of all, there's not like <laughs> one right i mean it's not there's nothing out there right now that's going to cover our entire collection so um my proposal was like let's let's use our own collections as a starting a jumping off point because um 
we we have to cover everything that's in the catalog um mm -hmm. and then like down the road maybe there's a way we can bring in the link data and link out to databases and use their works that are more hardy um to fill in the blanks So Jason, are you saying something along the lines of um, what I would sort of call like harvesting sort of partner bibliographic information in order to find, you know, throw a, throw a machine at it and tell it to find the links between those things so that then we have our own resource for identifying things that are like each other? Because you're right in the sense that there's not one source out there. If we go and we look at something that might have bibliographic data, we're sort of at the mercy of that particular source continuing and then whether or not it's free or not. Um, and then of course, then complementing that with something like Music Brains where we would get information about um, music and then if there's something out there about films and those are external to us that we don't control, which- um, Right, and it would, it would be nice if we could make that like a two-way street, you know, like mm -hmm. let's generate from all the Koha users a, a solid database and then maybe that solid database could interact with the book brains database or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So then let's extrapolate from that that we say, okay, today we get ferberization, tomorrow we take down OCLC, right? Is that is that the plan? Is that the goal? <laughs> We're being recorded. So. Is, that a, is that a stretch goal for us? I mean, <laughs> no comment. Can I blink twice? <laughs> I've got a feeling most of us will be retired by the time we get right. to that take yeah. down the CLC steps. So I think we're all safe, probably. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Um, I would say that, you know, we mentioned the survey from the uh, Koha conference uh, earlier. There were, I think, at least three people that said that something they would like to see at the next conference is a discussion of BibFrame. And then there was also um, people wanted to know about ferberization. I think there were a lot of people, somebody talked about it at one of the presentations. I think there are a lot of people that don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, yeah, Bruce raises his hand. <laughs> I've heard of it, but it, the, then I forgot about it. Yeah, for a medical library, it's probably not going to be uh, yeah. the same kind of, have the same kind of impact that it will for public libraries, mm -hmm. so. A lot of my queries come in and saying, I'm doing a book on, you know, Louis the third, what do you got? And uh, mm -hmm. that's dealt with manually at this point. Mm -hmm. In the biographies we got, but it gets, the question gets broad very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for for us, you know, we the issue we have is like, you know, when you've got something like 50, you know, we've got 51 public libraries, well, about 50 libraries, mostly public libraries, and there are 55, maybe 60 different editions of uh, Pride and Prejudice. So when you look in the catalog for Pride and Prejudice, you get 50 different results. And having one that just says Pride and Prejudice book, you know, that would make things a lot simpler for borrowers. And the solution that libraries have often come up with uh, to solve that problem for their patrons is they shove all of the different editions of Pride and Prejudice onto one record. And so you got no idea what the hell you're getting when you, when you place a hold on it. And that's fine if they're all good editions, but these are public libraries, so most, so about half of them are, are crap editions. So half of them are, are, you know, cheap paperback, you know, with no, you know, there's a very, very in quality uh, in, in what you can get, so. And, and for us, it's like, we don't let them crunch them all together. So then we have 50 different records. And if they put their hold on one record, then that copy can't be found. There's no avenue for, the other copies to fill the record without deleting the whole and replacing it and managing it. So what I want from this is that consolidation for holds so that it can, it can streamline that process and not, um, not bog things down like it gets bogged down right now. Would it be possible to create a master record for Pride and Prejudice and then use analytics to link to the others? 
or is that counterproductive? And the, this one, the issue there is that it's a manual process. Um, and that would be, you know, the biggest, the biggest problem. Something that automatically does it would be ideal um, because the idea, you know, uh, some of the, for, for some consortiums like us, I don't have any central catalogers and many of, at the 51 libraries I do have some of the catalogers, um, some of the catalogers have a master's degree in library science. Some of them have a bachelor's degree. Some of them are also uh, our high school graduates who are also the library director and they're the library director, they're the person at the circulation desk and they also clean their toilets at the end of the week and they only work 22 hours a week. Some of them don't even work that much. So there's a, <clears throat> there is a wide variety of skill levels. So a manual solution is probably not gonna work not, at not a lot of small public like libraries. That, no. Yeah. Yeah, that also rules out the 952Z, which would be very tedious. Yeah. Might work, but not well. I'm, I'm really itching to start talking about analytics, but we only have two minutes. So I thought it was like a, a topic for another day. Join us next month and bring yes. the picture of the bear on the Telephone wires. Never did understand <laughs> that one. Honey on the wire. That's right. That's right. Did you know bears used to climb telephone poles? I don't know why. Because they're there. Yeah. <laughs> I heard the transformer sizzling and thought it might be bacon. Oh, of course. <laughs> So 10 58 and he wouldn't have one minute nelson so with analytics you you could manually handle all the requirements if you just manually did it without trying to get into too much of a discussion with a, tw a 20 second answer <laughs> but that's, there is, that if there is such a thing that can be an impossible task when you've got a consortium okay yeah. okay but if you're a small special yeah. library like i am and one i'm, minute, I'm, I'm like the one doing yeah. it let me try that. We've got a lot of translations of uh, Russian or uh, uh, Roman originals that uh, have that same, you know, which translation do you want? Uh huh. I may try that. Thanks. I may, I may talk to you offline. <laughs> I've got a set of questions around that. Thank you. Uh, you use the. Uh, uh, cataloging email list that's the best way to reach me okay uh, so i'm about to leave on another cruise and typically i can't use zoom on those that's why we're here to answer questions and confuse each other my collection's confusing enough <laughs> Uh, 17 magazines condensed into one and then split out again. Mm. Yes. It's, uh, it's not easy. <laughs> not fun. And that's, that's like yeah. 773 or something? That the analytics? Yeah. yeah, I've been, I've been using 700 fields. Sometimes it sort of works. And not sure I understand everything I know yet. Okay. I think I may yeah. use that as a signature quote. What's that? <laughs> don't, don't understand everything I know yet. Yes. Let me write that down. It's unfortunately not humorous. <laughs> want me to make it trad or do you want your name? I'll say anon. I don't care. Okay. I'm, I'm sure I'm, it's not original with me. Okay. Anything else in minus one minute? Say it fast enough. We'll go back in time. 
Must be true. I saw it on the internet. I was say, can you get Zoom up to 88 miles an hour? Uh, <laughs> I don't think my car will go that fast. That would be naughty if you could. Uh, only cool. eight miles over the speed limit in Utah. Yeah. Okay. It, it's only three miles an hour over the speed limit in Montana. Wow. <laughs> Used to be reasonable and prudent in Nevada. It was in Montana, too. Well, I got to go. I'll aunt, see everybody later. I've just been three months traveling at not I, more than 22 knots. So. <laughs> hey, yes. Thank you so all. Draw the evening, <laughs> evening meeting to a close. Jason, could you... Uh, Farewell, everyone.